Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketCage.com, and this is June 4th, 2017, edition of Market Outlook. So quite the powerful week. Uh, the market is on target to have gains of uh, over 40% for the year uh, if you look at NASDAQ. But let's take a look. Year to date, you can see all of our key indices are up uh, with it being led by the NASDAQ 100. So you really can't argue uh, with the blistering pace uh, of the markets in general. Now, what's interesting is volume. As you can see, we've got four accumulation days in the last two weeks. That's telling you that overall there's really good volume. Uh, really good volume. Institutional players are definitely stepping in and buying. That's an accumulation day. Just to review, it's when the volume on an update exceeds the prior day. So uh, over the last two weeks, we've had four of those uh, and only basically one uh, distribution day. So markets still under accumulation. That's a plus. Overall performance here is a plus as well. So not much more we can say other than things are in gear from uh, looking at this particular uh, set of tables. Okay, let's take a look at sectors. So this is um, of interest because there's still this uh, lagging or this disturbing uh, condition where utilities, right, over the last uh, three months and over the last six months and again over the last five days as well, the last week, you've had utilities outperforming the S&P 500. Generally, that is a warning about the fact that utilities seen as a conservative risk-off type of play has been outperforming the S&P even as it turns out to new highs. Now, that's the negative news, and it's definitely something of uh, a cautionary uh, yellow flag being uh, uh, displayed here. Now, on the positive side, you can see semiconductors um, up very strong on the week, up 1.8%. Technology also up 1.4%. Consumer staples um, actually also did, did well. So that's very, very strange behavior. Usually consumer staples, utilities tend to lag, but that has not been the case. Now, uh, the other uh, positive sign is that the consumer discretionary spending, more on luxury goods and things like that, up 2.0%, 2 2%, that is the strongest sector. So you're getting this divergence and it's still there. So our risk-off indicator is still saying um, risk-off in an environment where things are uh, in upside mode. So, you know, definitely uh, uh, interesting, uh, unusual type of scenario. Now, retail, um, definitely you can see over the last six months, retail, energy, definitely in trouble. Um, and as you can see, uh, year to date, uh, energy and retail in trouble. The other anomaly, of course, is that retail, um, which is driven by the consumer, which accounts for 70% of the U.S. economy, definitely lagging, although you did uh, keep pace with the market this week. So in essence, um, you've got this sort of uh, what I would call uh, neutral to iffy situation regarding sectors. So you've, you've got the scenario where the overall trend intact, uh, volume of, you know, in positive uh, territory, and um, the situation with sectors definitely putting up that yellow flag, although the good sign is that the leading stuff is still continuing to lead. So uh, just keep this uh, in the back of your your mind and understand that uh, uh, not everything always is lined up and in gear, but there is this definite caution 
yellow flag that is uh, being presented to us with utilities acting as strong as they are. Now, let's take a look at uh, some other areas uh, of or different asset classes and <clears throat> a couple things that you can see here. Number one is that, of course, uh, commodities and energy, right? Oil and gas exploration, coffee, sugar, and volatility, right? All getting crushed. So that's that's of uh, uh, that's a trend that is still intact. Now the other thing is that foreign equities definitely leading um, U.S. equities. So you can see virtually all over the world with it really led by France, Italy, Spain, um, and even Korea now up over 30 percent with the um, new uh, regime there uh, based on um, the impeachment of the prior president and the election of the new one. So you're getting some really uh, excellent performance, outperformance in the rest of the world compared to the U.S. And that trend has is continuing and persistent. And you can see France over the last five days up 1.6 percent, um, certainly leading uh, the U.S. So <clears throat> there you have the uh, overall picture. Um, again, uh, is that foreign e equities led by the Eurozone definitely improving. Now, one other thing to note here is that biotech acted extremely well. Um, that's more of a speculative play. That's also a positive sign. All right, let's take a look at some of the market internals. So taking a look at the S&P 500 in terms of market internals, you can see we've got a generally improving state without it really running too rich. So first thing here, right, this is a short-term five-day up-down volume ratio. And you can see, you know, with that holiday, uh, <clears throat> pre-holiday trading, um, we sort of dropped off and then improved um, over the last several days. Now, something that smooths it out, uh, the uh, advanced declines, which is the McClellan Oscillator, we definitely tested sort of the midpoint, which was uh, successful, and moved back up into positive territory. So that certainly is a positive. This one is sort of the up-down volume number here is sort of a neutral. And uh, in terms of a shorter-term advanced decline reading, we're getting pretty rich, but that's a positive sign. We like it, right, when you're above the key moving averages, certainly above the 200, and you run rich. It means that the corrections get narrower um, and you're definitely in bull mode. One of the preferable ways to use the advanced decline and up-down volume readings is to really uh, look at the overall trend. And when things get oversold, it becomes buy areas for the overall market. So these... Um, Market internal uh, readings are best used um, at extreme oversold conditions, um, ex especially within a larger term uptrend where we're above the 200-day moving average. So that's the best way to use this. Um, but overall, right now, we're definitely still in positive mode. All right, let's take a look at what it shows us in terms of the composite. Well, actually, if you look at the composite, which is the NASDAQ composite, we're actually a bit more uh, on the positive side. So as you can see on the up-down volume, we're above our midpoint and not overbought. We're doing well on the McClellan, which is looking at advanced declines over a longer term period. That turn, uh, sort of uh, decidedly positive on this upswing here. And on a shorter term basis, we're not quite over in overbought or um, in a very rich territory, but trending up there. So I would give the market internals here 
a big positive for the NASDAQ composite. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, the new high, new low ratio. And also we got a distinct improvement as well. We moved above our 70% level decisively um, over the last couple days, right? You can see we sort of tripped up and then did have that sort of sell-off. Um, we got beneath the 70% zone um, on that sell-off, but then pretty much immediately uh, have been in recovery mode. So we're back into positive. You can see on an absolute basis the number of new 52-week highs versus lows um, on this uh, tremendous rally that we've had uh, running in gear. No divergence or some sort of uh, weird anomaly uh, regarding new highs and new lows. Okay, so now let's take a look at some uh, this, oh, a similar indicator on the uh, NASDAQ uh, 100. So looking at uh, new highs, new lows, you can see this has been lagging a little bit. But, you know, FANG stocks, the top stocks have really contributed to this explosion to the upside. And remember, NASDAQ is up over 20% year to date, 20%. That's a blistering uh, return over the first five months. And of course, as you can see down here, the number of new highs versus new lows really uh, moving up. Um, in general, uh, we're basically at the cusp of the 70% level. Um, so it's sort of a, a neutral reading on this indicator, but the overall price and trend certainly intact. And this um, new high, uh, new low ratio indicator um, basically has been lagging because you've got tremendous movement in the index because of the leading stocks, the FANG stocks. The top 10 or 15 stocks are really contributing almost all of the upside to uh, this NASDAQ 100 index. So it's not surprising that this is lagging a little bit. So I give this indicator a little bit more of a neutral. It's not uncommon for uh, just a few stocks to drive indices higher. So one of the um, anomalies or one of the uh, counterintuitive concepts is that oftentimes it's a small group of leading stocks that contribute to an index, especially um, when it's cap weighted. Okay, so now um, let's take a look at our next indicator. And this is sentiment. And you can't argue with this. Uh, volatility has been absolutely crushed. As you can see down here, on an absolute basis, we basically are at new lows, which considering the market's at new highs and, uh, you know, players are relatively complacent, can't argue with this as well. So this is sort of confirming the uh, overall pattern in the market as we blew out to new highs. So unless we really get a spike, um, what I'd be uh, looking for, let's, let's just take a look, is a potential spike over the recent high here um, or the recent little rally could be uh, an indication that we're going to get a sell-off. So what you want to do is come back and see if we're actually moving over this point in here. Um, this is a little bit uh, unconventional from our normal reading saying, well, we have to take out the 50-day uh, moving average, which is this magenta line. I'd be looking for a cross over that recent uh, little rally here for a potential uh, short-term uh, move to the downside in the markets, which, of course, the VIX generally runs inversely to. So right now, um, you can say it's a positive. Things are obviously on an absolute level really, really low, um, but not surprising considering we're in super acceleration mode um, in the underlying indices, and this runs counter. Okay, let's take a look 
at another sentiment indicator. And this, we look at the uh, ratio between one month and three month volatility on uh, S&P 500 stocks. And as you can see right now, right, we're running into what I would call, right, I mean, look, basically all through here, what, excuse my, uh, my use of the pen here, you can see, right, we moved all the way up before when we breached this sort of level in here, we actually started getting, um, excuse me, starting from here to get this sell off and then sideways action. But like I said before, a lot of the market internals and sentiment indicators, especially when you're in a strong uptrend, well above the 200 day moving average and it's sloped up, this becomes a great indicator to buy weakness, right? In here, this is an area to buy weakness, as opposed to looking at overbought when you're in a really strong trend. Um, the best way to use it um, at this point would be to look to buy dips, unless we get really uh, excessive and up in this level here, or certainly above the blue line, uh, which is the 1.2 to 1.3 level. Okay. Actually, it's uh, 1.3 uh, in terms of the ratio between short-term and, uh, well, one month and three-month volatility. So right now, I consider this a positive. It's running in a bullish zone without it being excessively overbought. This is where we would expect it to be considering the overall trend of the market. So I'm going to show you one particular chart. Uh, looking at gold on an absolute basis relative to the S&P. So this uh, particular chart on the bottom that I'm going to highlight here is looking at gold versus the S&P. This go chart goes back to 2007. So one thing you can see is on an absolute basis, the relative performance of gold versus the S&P is at its low, certainly over almost a 10-year basis, right? And it looks like we're potentially about to break out. Now, this particular indicator right here is called our real motion indicator, and that's looking at uh, pure momentum. And one of the things that you can see is that gold, right, uh, went into a positive momentum mode um, in the mid part of 2016 and has sort of been compressing, right? As you can see, this level in here, right, has been compressing over the past year. So if we can get a little bit more strength to the upside, you sort of have a vacuum quite a bit higher than here. So the other thing to note is that the 50 week and the 200 week are sort of converging and we're starting to trade above both of those. So with the daily charts in here, the fact that we're still on an absolute basis relative to the S&P, gold is extremely cheap. Now you do have inflation sort of picking up a little bit. Um, and so the target rate for the Fed is 2%. Uh, and we're sort of flirting with that or a little bit below. So there are times that both gold and the equities market go up in tandem. Now, with gold pausing for as long as it has, the fact is that we, if we can get above uh, the recent price action here, it could definitely mean a nice move back up to certainly the first level of resistance is 140 as you can see, we're trading at 120. And if it starts really accelerating to the upside, there's no reason to say we couldn't get up to oh, 160, which is equivalent to about $1,600 uh, per ounce for gold. All right, that's it for now. See you next week and good trading.